Feldspar was the first Earthian to be intentionally launched into space. <laughs> intentionally. Dude, that is creepy as hell, and it's also literally an SCP. Ooh. I'm ready to die in space. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to Outer Wilds. If you're new to the channel, uh, hello, my name is Lukel, I'm a freelance illustrator and let's player. I play all kinds of games on this channel, from big budget games to smaller indie titles like this one. Uh, so thank you for joining me today. If you are a regular and you're wondering where Walking Dead is, as I mentioned, we're gonna take a small break in between Walking Dead seasons, so uh, in the meantime we're gonna be playing this game. But don't worry, Walking Dead will be back very soon. So in the meantime we'll be playing this game, Outer Wilds. I keep thinking it's the Outer Wild, but I think it's just Outer Wild. <laughs> this is a game that's been very, very highly recommended to me by a few of my friends, namely my good friend uh, Jonathan, aka Venom Lion, uh, aka one of the greatest YouTuber to ever live. <laughs> I'm only half joking about that. And yeah, Joe wanted me to play this so much that he actually bought the game for me, so, so uh, shout out to Joe for this playthrough, that's all you. A lot of people really highly recommend this game. And it's, it's one of these types of games where people don't just recommend it, they they say like you have to play this for yourself. Like it, there's gonna be something like life-changing or mind-blowing about this. It's one of these games like, you know, Undertale and uh, these very unique experiences that once you play it, the first thing you want to do is tell all your friends, oh, you have to play this for yourself, you know? In fact, because this is one of these types of games, I would recommend if you haven't played this, it might be better for you to actually play it for yourself and then watch this playthrough. That's what I would recommend, but if you'd rather just experience it with me and this playthrough, then that's alright too. Now, full disclosure, this is a blind playthrough, however, I did play a little bit of this game, like I think a year or two ago when you first bought the game for me. I played like an hour or two, but I legitimately do not remember anything about the game or the story. Or uh, There is one thing I remember from this game, and it's like the thing that happens and if you've played this game you know exactly what i'm talking about but i'm not gonna say it yet in case some people like aren't familiar with the game at all so you're probably a little disappointed you're like oh he already knows about the the thing but don't worry i actually have the footage of when i first experienced it because i was streaming the game at the time when i was playing it with uh, for joe so when we get to that part and you know the part i'm talking about i'm gonna play that footage of like my first reaction to it so you're not you're not gonna lose any of like the legit first experience okay but that's really all i remember I don't remember anything else about the game and I don't know anything else either. Trust me, this is a true blind playthrough. I don't know anything other than that thing. <laughs> let's share this experience together and I hope you enjoy it. So uh, without further ado, let's jump right in. Wake up. I can see that the light there, so something happened up there. So this is a game where you're like on this this little planet and you explore a system, is what I kind of remember it being. So we got a nice little campfire here. These funny looking aliens, talk to Slate. There's our pilot, back from your pre-launch camp out under the stars, I see. So it's launch day, eh? Seems like only yesterday you joined the space program and suddenly here you are, leaving on your first solo voyage. What do you say, ready to get this beauty off the ground? It's all fueled up and ready to go. I'm ready if you are. Are you kidding? Of course I'm ready. It's finally time to test the new landing hydraulics with a pilot instead of the autoflight system. Speaking of pilots, make sure you don't crash the ship the first time you put it down, you hear? Uh, no promises. <laughs> anyway, you'll need to get the launch codes from Hornfells at the observatory before you can lift off. Just bring those here once you've said your goodbyes or whatever. Alright. So is this... Yeah, this requires the launch codes, okay. So... Whoop. The jump is a little floaty, which I guess uh, makes sense if this is a small planet. The gravity wouldn't be very strong. Oh, and you can hold and release it. Woo! All right. Uh, okay, there is a walk button. Oh, and we got music, how nice. 
Oh. Right, okay, we have like a little radar thing. Frequency Outer Wilds Venture. And then we can hear like a number of things out there in space, including someone whistling. Whistling a little tune. Uh, I was just trying to see if there's a button to run. This is some very nice music. Look at that. We can look out in the stars and we're gonna be exploring all of that, I believe. Fly model ship. Right. Uh, the one thing I remember is that the <laughs> ship is very hard to fucking control. I remember I had a lot of trouble with it. I think that was most of my time playing this game was just trying to understand the the controls, <laughs> and I never, I could never really do it. But uh, once we're in the real thing, I, I think we'll we'll be able to get used to it. Mika! Wow, that was just like the time the external fuel tanks exploded on re-entry. You, you'll be okay flying the big one, right? Uh, hopefully. Launch tower. Hey, Porphy. What's this big shadow? Some big, like, planet or asteroid just passed in front of the sun. Look at all the, all the planets and everything are like moving. It's like a dynamic system. It's so cool. It's all like moving in real time. It's really nice. You know, you've got your games like No Man's Sky that are like massive in scale and they're really going for a scale, but I think in this game they they were like, well, instead, let's make a smaller space, but make it very interesting to explore and like make it move in real time. And so, obviously, the smaller the scale of your game is, the more you can, the more you can make it polished and detailed. Hey, Porphy. Hey, yo, Hatchling. I hear you're leaving us to seek adventures among the stars. When you return, let's you, me, and Gosan open up a bottle of the good stuff. I'm only seeking adventure amongst one star, actually. Other stars are too far away. The good stuff is less delicious sap wine and more daunting digestive challenge. Uh, I guess we're being a smartass, so... Another metaphor ruined in the name of scientific accuracy. Nevertheless, I do hope you enjoy your travels. Good luck! Oh, the astronaut returns. What can I do for you? Uh, any new dirt? I'm hoping to teach Esker to tap trees next time they return from the Adel Rock. If they'll bring me lunar sap, I can attempt moon wine. Moon wine. Can you imagine? Uh, what are you up to? I just finished sealing up another batch of sap wine for aging. I like to begin aging a batch on the day of a significant occasion, you know. That's why there are so many bottles labeled structural collapse and house fire. <laughs> Alright. Enjoy your travels. Uh, can you enter these buildings? Not this one. The observatory. Hey, can you run in this game? I don't think you can. Outer Wilds Venture. So I guess Outer Wilds is the name of their... Settlement? Company? Use satellite camera. This projector is linked to our Sky Shutter satellite, which is currently orbiting Timber Hearth. Timber Hearth? The satellite is equipped with two onboard cameras. See if you can take a snapshot of our village. Oh, these are like real time snapshots that I'm taking as it's moving. I guess that's kind of our village. Wow, interesting. Hey man. Rutil? Rudel? 
You're actually blasting off in that thing, huh? They really don't explode as often anymore. I'm told my odds of survival are statistically quite high. Yeah, the space program has certainly come a long way. I should probably thank you for causing fewer flash fires than your predecessors. By the way, good luck with those retro rockets. Are you going to watch the launch? Of course! I'll be watching from a safe distance, obviously, and mostly to make sure nothing catches fire, but watching nonetheless. Do you really worry that the space program will burn the village down? Only constantly. You learn to live with it. You also learn to sleep with a bucket of water next to your bed, just in case. <laughs> Alright, they don't seem very uh, trusting of our technology. This pilot seat used by pioneering astronaut Feldspar is all that remains of our inaugural flight into space. Although it's been argued such a distinction requires a breathtakingly liberal definition of flight, <laughs> that they will nevertheless always be remembered as a landmark achievement in Hearthian history. So they just like kind of shot him into space, I'm guessing, and then he fell down and died. <laughs> That's my guess. Uh... That looks a little bit like the radar I have. In fact, that's exactly what I have. Oh, you can zoom in with that too. Where's that whistling guy? Oh, he's moved on to harmonica. <laughs> oh, I was hearing the whistling guy too. Okay, so they're different. It's different ones. It tells you the distance, too. Oh, and the distance changing because we're moving on the planet. That's so, so fucking cool. I was like, why is it moving? But then I'm like, because, you, you know, we're so used to thinking of Earth as like stationary and like everything else is moving. I mean, we know it's not stationary, but we tend to think like that even though we know the Earth's moving all the time. But it, it's wild to think about that we're like constantly moving in space. I think that's kind of what this game's gonna explore as a concept. Is the field of view like a little weird? Like a real fisheye thing going on. and I can see my legs and my arms I'm all three-fingered aliens like the Quarians and the Krogans and the Turians basically every alien in Mass Effect <laughs> there we go that's better I don't know about you I know personally looking watching people play first-person games can get a little disorienting if they move the camera a lot so I, I try not to do that too much So it's launch day, huh? Hal's going to miss you. I don't know who Hal is. Speaking of launch day, I was thinking about it, and the platform those ships launch from is getting old. Isn't it about time you built a new, less flammable one? The big tree in this village would be the perfect choice. I wouldn't mind helping out the space program, just say the word. The launch pad is flammable? You didn't realize that? Don't worry, it's held up for all the launches so far. It'll definitely be fine for yours. Probably. I mean, it is kind of weird that you guys are using wood for all your technology. It doesn't seem too uh, safe, but what do I know? Oh, playing on the guitar. Do they have... Yeah, they do have three fingers. Nice. Hello there, space cadet. I hear you're leaving the crater today. If you meet any of the other travelers up there, remind them to take proper care of their instruments, won't you? Tell me about the travelers' instruments. Oh sure, I made all of their instruments, you know? Let me see, there's Chert's drums, Rybeck's banjo, and Gabro's flute. And Feldspar's harmonica, of course, though Feldspar has been missing for a long time. Sometimes it feels like just yesterday they were playing their harmonica around the campfire. Well, I can hear them. I mean, I can hear an, an harmonica. Anyway, you hear music in space, that'll be one of the space program's other travelers. If you feel like company, you can always pull out your signal scope and track them down. Trouble is, every time a Hartian leaves for outer space, that's one less musician in our orchestra. Um, 
Where is the observatory? It's a question like that, what make us worried about you going to space on your own, you know? The observatory is up to the pad behind the waterfall. There are a couple of signs marking the way, but really you just keep going up and then hook it right when you get to the zero G cave. All right, so all these doors are closed. They're just for show. So, do you not know about the harmonica in space, or has no one just bothered to go visit him? Hmm. Hello! Tefra. Hello, astronaut! If it isn't my favorite troublemaker. We wanted to play hide and seek, but Moraine won't let us borrow their signal scope because it's really delicate and not supposed to be thrown around like that. Hey, can we use your signal scope? Can we? Please? We'll even let you be it. Sure, let's play. Okay, here are the rules. Galena and me will hide with these radios and you'll use your signal scope to find us. Last one to be found wins. Okay, close your eyes and start counting. Alright. So we're there. Okay, I guess that's one. They're having you like... This is basically just to teach you how the signal scope works. Okay, found y'all. You found me? But my hiding spot was super good, I mean... Is it though? Don't forget you have to find both of us. Yo. Okay, the other one is... Over there. Whee! Oh, there you are. I won. I'm happy. Thanks for playing with us. Okay, well, that's it. I thought maybe they would go back there, but... Okay. So, yeah, they're teaching us uh, how the signal scope works, which is nice. Fishing rhyme, fishing rhyme. Singing helps me pass the time. You're leaving the crater? Guess we'll all be a little busier without you around to lend a hand. That big water planet giants deep. That's where I'd go. That's not where I'd go. <laughs> I don't want to go to a giant water planet. Why is that? One time after the rest of the village had left to sleep and it was just the two of us sitting around the campfire, Gabro told me about their first trip to Giant's Deep. They landed their ship easily enough in the waves but couldn't see too far down on account of how murky the water was, I guess. Too dark. Ugh. Gabro wants to see what lay beneath the surface, so they decided to travel deeper. They traveled down and down. But suddenly, Gabro couldn't go any further. Wow, you can be really rude. Tell me more. I will, I was just pausing dramatically. <laughs> As though exercising a will of its own, the water was refusing to let Gabro go any deeper. It held Gabro back, almost as if it were trying to protect them from something. Very ominous thank you for this terrifying account. And then in the terrible darkness, Gabro saw it. The tentacle of some hideous beast! Is that all true? Heard it from Gabro himself. Gabro can be a little fanciful, sure, but... You aren't a liar. I mean, probably anyway. I guess if you want to know if the story is entirely, <laughs> entirely true, you can go see Giants Deep for yourself. That sounds really fucking scary. Going down into like a giant planet full of water and then just seeing a big tentacle. Ooh! I'm looking for Hornfells. Oh, them? I would bet today's haul they're in the observatory. Not that I've caught anything yet, but if I had, I'd definitely bet it. Hornfells is pretty much always in the observatory. Alright. Zero G cave. Some very nice, peaceful music. Kind of music that makes you wonder about the immensity of space. Look at all these nice... Oh, actually, that's where the harmonica guy is on this planet. Isn't that the, the song that plays on the title screen? Change frequency. 
Oh. Oh, that's why I found him so easily last time. It's because there's a frequency for hide and seek and then another one for Outer Wilds Venture. Oh, they're singing the same song. I don't know what that is. That's is that Giants Deep? That's just creepy. But the guy See all these instruments are playing the same song. What's this? What that? What's that? Oh, that's probably a satellite taking the photos. All the people on the instruments are playing the same song, just like each a different instrument, but they're playing at the same time, but they're all like on different planets. So what the fuck's up with that? I guess that's our objective is like to go see each person, uh, each like person that owns an instrument. That's so weird. I saw smoke coming from Young Bark Crater up north and figured I should go check it out. You can use the scout launcher, just please don't break it while I'm gone. Up north, the scout launcher. Is this the scout launcher? He said north, but I don't know what north is. Like, I don't have a compass or nothing. The harmonica is on this planet. Uh, that doesn't really look like a planet. That looks like, I guess, the remnants of a planet that like exploded. I'm getting ahead of myself. Like we'll deal with this once we go to space, I suppose. East Nomai ruins. Okay, so that's east, meaning this is north. Young Bark Crater. Okay, let's try shooting this stuff north. Oh, it's on the ground. Oh, that's all in real time. And then you can just retrieve it. So yeah, there was like a crater. There's a crater there with like smoke coming out of it, so there's something there at the bottom. I guess that's one of the first things we can uh, check. Okay, interesting. Geyser Mountains. Quantum Grove Crater. I mean, I could send a scout, but I guess let's just go uh, ourselves, you know? Hello, Moraine. Hello, astronaut. This is good weather for your launch, right? That's lucky. Any good sounds from space today? There are. My signal scope is set to the Outer Wilds Ventures frequency, so I'm listening to the Traveler's music. Last night I heard Rybeck's banjo coming from Brittle Hollow. I hope that means they're safe. I can hear different planets too. It depends on what time of day or night it is, since different planets are in the sky at different times. Signal scopes are cool. Haven't you been up in this tree a while? I'm concerned Mar will cut down this tree if there's no one in it, so I don't want to leave it for too long. Mayor Rutil... Rutil? How do you say that? Rutil? Mayor Rutil says Marl isn't supposed to cut it down, but I don't think they see eye to eye on this one. I'll still watch your lunch though. I'll have a good view from up here. Did you say eyes to eyes? Oh, because they have like four eyes. <laughs> That's funny. And the game has pretty fun writing so far, like it's a little tongue in cheek. What's that about? You're throwing a rock and then it just vanishes? Hi, astronaut. You know the patch of ghost matter inside this fence? Gossan said it used to be bigger when they were a hatchling, because ghost matter evaporates. 
It just takes a super, super long time to go away. We were about to sneeze there. I hope there's still ghost matter in the village when I'm growing up. Ghost matter is awesome. Ghost matter is super cool. It'll burn the heck out of you. Yeah, I heard touching it hurts so bad it feels like your whole hand's on fire. Try not to walk into any in space, okay? That sounds bad and painful. It's cool that little scouts can detect ghost matter and all, but what would be really cool is if the little scout could, like, shoot ghost matter at stuff. Pew, pew, pew! What's the little scout? Those machines we send out? Uh, I was hoping I could ask you about the other stuff you said, but... So if I go in there, I'm just gonna burn. Okay, well, let's, let's not risk it. <laughs> Danger! Inside this fence is a pocket of ghost matter. You'd think you'd do more than just put a little wooden fence around it, if it was really dangerous? A strange and dangerous substance that's invisible to the naked eyes. The good news is that you can detect ghost matter with a camera. Moving through ghost matter is uniquely painful and will probably kill you. Don't complain to me if you hurt yourself fooling around. I mean, you could have put a higher fence. Oh, we can see it. Oh! Okay, so you can see it. Kind of. I don't know why both things just say take the snapshot. So, the rock you're throwing, is it like just disappearing? I guess it's getting burned? Or is it like being transported elsewhere? Okay, we're gonna go somewhere and we're gonna see like a pile of rocks. All these rocks that this person's been like throwing in it. <laughs> That'd be fun. Zero G cave. Come say hi to your old flight coach before your lunch. I've got zero G training set up if you want a refresher. Yes, I definitely need that. Oh, you're missing an eye. Thankfully, you got three more. <laughs> Hey, thought I might see you before the big launch. Nerves getting the better of you? I'm a little nervous, yeah. Good, everyone should be a bit nervous going into space. I got cocky during my first flight and nearly put a new crater in the moon. Still, I was never as green as you. Hey, I've gotten better. Think so, do you? Feel like proving it to your old flight coach? I'm noticing my camera's kind of hiding a bit of the dialogue there. Uh, I might move my camera somewhere else, maybe on the right, or like put it in the, up in the corner somewhere. Uh, if you have any feedback on placement of the camera, like if you'd rather I'd be in the corners or like on the other side, let me know and I'll, I'll adjust, because I am covering a bit of the subtitles. There's a satellite, which is definitely not just a piece of broken mining equipment set up down in the zero-g cave and in needs of repairs. If you're looking for a little last-minute zero-g practice, head down the lift and into the cave. Or don't, so long as you're confident you can make ship repairs in space. One repaired satellite coming up. Cool, get to it and try not to concuss yourself right before your first launch. Okay. Let's see. Oh, we're going down very deep inside this planet. This is deep. Oh. Okay, yeah, there's a little, a little bit less gravity here. Ooh. Okay, it's the zero G cave. Let's suit up. Down, up trust. Okay, so that's up trust, down trust. It says gravity is zero, but it's not zero because I'm falling down. So clearly, horizontal trust. See, this would be very confusing, but this little thing they put right here, that's super fucking useful. Because, like, the control themselves are a little bit frustrating, but when you when I look at it this way, I understand exactly what's happening. Like it's very it makes it visually very obvious. 
So that's super useful. I'm glad they put that. I'm glad they put that there. Um. So what's down here? Okay, well there's someone there, so let's go talk to them. What's up? What are you mining for anyways? It's tough! Nice of you to drop down! Uh, I'm getting some zero G time in. So you're going in there? In the cave? Mm. What? No, I'm fine. Great. Great and fine. You don't look fine. Well, you know, I hate that cave, so I don't know why you're making me talk about it. Huh. I've got hand sweats. Why, what's in the cave? Uh, give me the dirt. Some fresh dirt? Not much happening down here lately. Let me think. Come to think of it, Tektite saw something crash outside of the village crater earlier. That's new and different. Oh hey, how about that? Yeah, they were on Firewatch with the old scout launcher and saw smoke, so they went to check it out. Safety first, right? Nah, I'm kidding. I said that to Tektite once. Pretty rude how long they left for it, if you ask me. Guess where I'm going today? Oh no, 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 <laughs> no way. You want to run off into space? That's your business, but don't make me, you know, think about it. Bad enough, we got this weird cave down here. What's weird about the cave? Now you're giving me the spooks. Should I not be going in there? Ooh. 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 Oh, we're going further down, even. Oh god. That's... okay, that's scary. Oh, now we're kind of in zero-g, yeah. Press to lock on. What? Press lock on? Roll? I am pressing L. It says press L to lock on, which I am, but it doesn't like, work. Okay, I repaired it. Oh, and I have limited fuel too, I'm just noticing. Oh god, this is... Roll. What does roll mean? Oh, it makes you like... Okay, you flip. You feel like... Okay, okay, okay. I get it. This is quite tricky to control. Okay, that's two. I'm sure this is riveting to watch. <laughs> Where's the other one? I can't see shit. Oh, it's inside. Okay, the lock-on just does not work. It just doesn't. I'll have to go in my options and see if there's like... Training simulation complete, yay! Now let's get out of here. Uh, I don't like being down here. Is this like literally the center of this fucking planet? Alright, let me out of here. That's enough floating. I can't say that was very helpful training. It's still very hard to control, but... We'll try our best. Alright, I did it. Nicely done! Of course, it'll be a little more stressful when you're hurling through space, but just remember you're trading and try not to hit anything big. I can see you're hitching to get off this rock, so go get the launch codes from the observatory and get out of here already. Best of luck out there, and hey, try to avoid getting yourself killed now that I've put so much time into training you, got it? I will try my best. Alright, uh, move my camera a little bit to the left so that I can hide like less of the less of the dialogue hopefully no one home here Whoa. it goes that so many interesting things to look at and I can't wait to go there and see what it's all about First things first, you, we need the launch codes.
Got a big ominous statue here. Oh, they're all signed. They all have a very clear <laughs> handwriting compared to most people that sign stuff. Outer Wilds Ventures founding members. Clockwise from top left, Hornfells, Gosan, Slate, and Feldspar. Okay. Do you think they they can differentiate each other or do, that they all look alike to each other? Is that racist? <laughs> They, they all kind of look the same. Big thanks to these additional founding members of Outer Wilds Venture, without whom we would never have gotten off the ground. Matthew Steinhauer, Ben... That... This, are these developers? Or like... Something like that? Quirty you up the pie? Yeah, that's that feels like... Developers put their names in there. Jordan Frith. Tom Cummings. Okay. Yeah. Maybe this game was on like Kickstarter or something, and these are like backers? I don't know. Outer Wilds Ventures, Timberheart's first and only space program was founded to explore the farthest reaches of our solar system. Feldspar was the first Earthian to be intentionally launched into space. <laughs> intentionally! They completed the first orbit around Timberheart and later made the first of what would be many landings on our moon, the Adel Rock. Okay, so the Adel Rock is our moon. It's so funny because obviously this planet could never have a space program, let alone even sustain itself because there's like nothing in here. It's so tiny. Like they wouldn't have enough space to even like grow food or anything. But you know, that's the fun of a game. What are you? They're a god maybe? Hey, hey, it's my favorite astronaut. Launch day at last, huh buddy? Is the translator tools inaugural flight too? I'm so excited it's making me nauseous. You okay? Do you need a bucket or something? Just think, you'll be able to translate any Nomai text you want. Okay, so Nomai, I guess, is like another alien civilization. The two of us put a lot of hours into inventing that tool, so don't break it, okay? <laughs> oh jeez, do not break it. <laughs> uh, ignore me, okay? I'm just nervous. And I'm not even the one going into space. How are you feeling? I'm terrified. Ah, oh, don't let me make you nervous. You've been training for this day since we were hatchlings, remember? You'll do great, I promise. So what's the dirt? Do you really like to say that? You here to see the new Nomai statue? New statue? You haven't heard? Gabro brought it back with them from Giant's Deep. Maybe you shouldn't be stealing artifacts from other planets? Ornfell's just finished prepping it for display. This is it right here. Neat, huh? Makes me wish we could see what a real life Nomai looks like, but I guess this is as close as we'll ever get. Check it out, looks like they had fur. Fur is weird. This is the first fully intact statue ever found, you know? And for how old it is, it's in great shape. Ah oh, jeez, I got a little carried away there. Go on, you have a ship to launch, take care of yourself out there, you hear? A Nomai. This remarkably intact statue was carved by the Nomai, an ancient species who dwelled in our solar system thousands of years ago. So they like the Protheans. <laughs> I'm sorry that I relate everything to Mass Effect, this is... I I'm too big of a Mass Effect fan, everything reminds me of it. The statue provides us with our most detailed look yet at the Nomai, who appear to have been covered with a layer of fur. Note the decorative jewelry that has been carved as part of the antlers. Although their artifacts and structures have been found on almost every planet in this solar system, we still have no idea where the species came from or what happened to them. Hmm, Reapers? Is there gonna be Reapers in this game? Well, that's nice. They have like a little handle in the back of their head, like luggage, so they can be easily carried around. That's a pretty interesting uh, looking alien. It's a little bit goat-like, I suppose. They must be like, oh, that's so weird. Only three eyes? How do they see? <laughs> uh, Giant's Deep, yeah. Just that it's crazy old and super tough. I wonder why the Nomai carved it. Find some answers there. Uh, where can I find Gabro? Gabro said they were going back to Giant's Deep. To wherever they found that Nomai statue. One of the islands, I think. You remember Gabro plays a flute, right? Like, all the time? I bet your signal scope could find them easily. If you do see Gabro, say hi for me. 
Uh, why did the Nomai make this statue? Good question. So Gabriel found this fully intact statue on Giant's Deep, right? Well, Hornfels told me it's made from the same type of special stone as the partial statue Chert brought back from the Hourglass Twins. That's why when Gabriel, you know, chipped the Giant's Deep statue, that stone fragment was repurposed for your ship's computer. So you damaged one of these statues and then you put that chip in the ship's computer? Doesn't sound like such a great idea. Maybe the statues were made for storing information. Oh. So like a Prothean beacon? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm gonna stop talking about Mass Effect. Think I'll discover anything cool in space? Hey, you never know. Maybe you'll be the one to solve the mysteries of the Nomai. Or maybe you'll discover a new kind of rock or something. <laughs> you know, one of these two. But honestly, as long as they don't end up naming new safety equipment after you, I'm sure you'll have done a great job. Okay, thanks. Take it easy. This thing really looks like it's gonna open its eyes and look at me and like speak directly to my brain or something. Oh, how nice. Look at that. Coming soon to a theater near future site of our next exhibit. If you've enjoyed your time with Outer Wilds, please consider supporting our planned museum expansion. Our quest to explore the furthest reaches of our solar system wouldn't be possible without generous visitors like you. We thank you profusely for your support and we hope to see you again soon. Okay, I guess that's where they're gonna build the museum. But there's only like a handful of these people, so it's so it's so weird. I mean, that's how it is in most games, you know, even like, uh, let's say Clock Town in Zelda Majora's Mask, there's only like maybe 30, 40 characters in total, and it's like, that's the whole town? <laughs> You have to suspend your disbelief, I guess, and assume that there's like more people, but it's a bit harder in this world where there's like really only them. What is this? The strange rock moving around is this girl that appears to react to conscious observation. The level-headed among us realize that there must be some sort of an optical illusion at play, but Gabriel claims the rock exists in all possible states until it is observed. I know an SCP when I see one. Whatever is actually happening, both sides of this debate agree the effect is extremely creepy. Dude, that is creepy as hell and it's also literally an SCP. Okay, the the less I have to deal with that, the better for my uh, brain. Watch closely, these balls move on their own. The ground is perfectly level, so what do you think causes this spooky motion? The answer is the moon. As it orbits our planet, the Adelrock's gravity pulls on objects from different directions. In fact, it's pulling on you right now. Oh yeah, they do move slightly. Interesting. Very cool. Stars like our sun generate light and heat by fusing hydrogen into helium. As it grows older, the star runs out of hydrogen and starts to contract. Yep, that's gonna happen to our sun as well. As the star's core contracts, it gets hotter, causing the outer layers to expand. The star has become a red giant. When the core is hot enough, it starts to fuse helium into carbon. If a star is massive enough, it will continue to fuse carbon into even heavier elements like iron. Ultimately, the star will collapse under its own gravity and then explode in a violent event called a supernova. Based on Church's observations, this will one day be the fate of our own sun! Well, not too soon, I hope. Some photos of like ruins on other planets, I suppose. This crystal was taken from a Nomai ruin on Brittle Hollow. You shouldn't be touching this shit. Mm. It seems to create a local gravity distortion and was most likely used to traverse steep surfaces. Try it out. Whoa. Oh. Some Mario Galaxy shit. I love how they find this relic. 
this weird relic of alien technology and they just use it like so casually they're like oh try it out instead of being like more cautious about it there's a little miniature model of I guess our ship the Nomai technology brought back from space by our astronauts has been a great boon to Outer Wilds ventures, allowing us to modify expedition gear in exciting and useful ways. For example, the Lil Scout now boasts a warp retrieval capability that allows astronauts to recall their scouts almost instantly. This has dramatically reduced the number of scouts lost to the depths of space. That is extremely, extremely useful. Can you use that for like a whole ship? Like if you've mastered teleportation can't you just like teleport the whole ship back on the planet oh that's a nomai skull what you see here are parts of the nomai skeleton we can tell from their skulls that they possessed antlers and quite unusually only three eyes the nomai body was most likely adapted for living exclusively on land the differences in the Nomai's anatomy, such as their shockingly fragile bone structure, show us that Herthians could have descended from Nomayan's ancestors. Oh. It's not clear where the Nomai originated from or why they disappeared. We hope to find more clues to this puzzle as we explore our solar system. They got eliminated by the Reapers. Aside from the dwellings and structures they built, the Nomai also made art. This decorated pottery was discovered on Brittle Hollow. Some ancient Nomai art depicts strange animals, foreign celestial objects, and other subjects that can't be found in our solar system, which makes us wonder whether the Nomai originated elsewhere in the universe, or simply had vibrant imaginations. Huh. Were the Nomai born in our solar system, or were they born among other stars and planets? And if they were, how and why did they come here? These are just some of the questions we hope to answer through further Xenoarchaeological expeditions. Really making me pronounce this kind of stuff. Can't you see I'm struggling with basic speech already? Oh, oh we can translate this stuff. This piece of Nomai writing was essential to deciphering their unique language. Although this text is linear, Nomai text often branches off from a central point. Interestingly, each branch tends to be written by a different author. Kasava. We're nearly ready. Felix and I have finished construction and she says... Oh wait. Calibrating the device won't take long. Fortunately, the Adel Rock's lack of atmosphere will make calibration simple. After all this time, I'm thrilled to finally resume our search. Okay, that's all there is. What about this thing? Can't translate that? Okay. Uh... Yeah, you could see how this, like, qualifies as writing. That's really cool, actually. That, like... That's something I could actually see happen. Because, like, most alien writing you see in games and fiction is often just, like... You know different characters but they basically use an alphabet just like we do but like another species could use something completely different like a string of lines or something like that you know that's that's really clever i like that all right i think that's i think that's everything in this place very cool little museum not creepy at all oh i forgot to check the fish this anglerfish specimen was found attached to the landing gear of one of our ships that flew close to Dark Bramble. It appears well suited to living in dark places with minimal atmosphere. Okay, you're just keeping it like that in there with nothing? Okay. Oh, we get more up here. There's our friend, I suppose. Oh, oh, that's the whole system. Whoop. Okay, I wasn't expecting to be like shut out into space. Oh, nice! Wow, you can see everything. 
That's so cool how they created like a whole... What's this? Okay, I don't know what that is. There's some huge thing like floating, going in a circle around the system, but like in a different arc. That's really cool how they created a whole system like that. But like the system is actually moving in real time. So we get the sun here. This structure very, very close to it. Which is like clearly, it's clearly not organic. Like it's an art artificial structure that someone built. But like it's so close to the sun. Can we even go there? Then we got the hourglass twin, the ash twin and amber twin. Okay, that's interesting. Then Timberheart is the second planet. And then there's the Adel Rock, our moon. You are here. <gasps> and then we got Brittle Hollow and Hollow's Lantern. Okay, so its moon is like, that's so weird. It's like all lava covered. And then Giant's Deep. And Giant's Deep also seems to have a moon, although it's not named. And it's also got structures around it. That's so scary. Oh, you can see light coming from under it. I'm so scared of going there. Like the idea of a gas giant or water giant, like what could possibly be at the center of it? It's like, ugh. That speaks to like your deepest, darkest fears. What is this here? This thing's like kind of distorting the light around it. Is that like a black hole or something? And then dark bramble. Yeah, that's the thing I saw that looks like like the remnants of a planet. And all that's left is like the roots of like some giant organism or something. And we heard music coming from there. So maybe someone is still on that planet or is like in the center of it. This is so fucking cool. And then this thing flying around that we don't, that's not named. I just see like a little red light. I guess it's a, it could be a satellite of some kind. Wait, so I'm guessing at some point all these things align, right? Because they all move at different speeds. I wonder if like they, they ever align perfectly. Huh. Oh. Really cool. No, oh, it's nighttime now. Ornfell's observations. This is incredible. At first, I thought the points of light in this image were stars, but no, they're galaxies. And this image covers just a tiny patch of the whole sky, which means the universe contains at least a thousand times more galaxies than we previously imagined. <laughs> it's stuff like that that you can't even start thinking about that because it's so insane. I think I need to sit down. <laughs> And you're like, oh wow, that's so, that's so crazy in this game. No, 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 no. The real world, like our real universe, is like billions of times bigger than that, which is <laughs> can't even think about it. This is odd. According to my redshift calculations, every single galaxy in this image is moving away from us. Yeah, the universe is expanding even in this game. In fact, the further away a galaxy is, the faster it appears to be moving away. It's almost as if the entire universe is expanding. Almost. But if that's true, was everything closer together in the past? And how far back can we extrapolate? Did the universe have a beginning? Hmm. These, these are the great questions, aren't they? That's the ultimate question of where the universe came from. Shit, that makes you lose your mind just thinking about it. So, is this a game about them discovering the Big Bang is a thing? <laughs> hey, Hornfalls. There you are. I just finished pre-flight observations and local conditions are good. Time to get our newest astronaut off the ground. And you'll be our first astronaut ever equipped with a Nomai Translator tool. I confess I've been giddy all day just thinking about it. We're better equipped than ever to unravel the mysteries of the Nomai. You and Hal should be very proud of your work. Tell me, what's your plan once you're in space? Um, 
Can I choose all of these? I meet up with the other travelers. I want to go somewhere no one's gone before. I think I'll start with something small. Yeah. You prefer to ease into things? That's a sensible plan. More sensible than most of our astronauts tend to be, and that's a fact. Do you think you'll go to the Adult Rock then? Our moon would be a safe place to travel to and get your bearings in space, and I'm sure Esker would appreciate the visit. Plus, we don't know what the ancient Nomai ruins on the moon are, or why they were built. You could put your new translator tool through its spaces. Well then, looks like all that's left is to send you off. All in all, it's a fine day for lunch. I'm ready to die in space. <laughs> I'm not one for superstition, but isn't that kind of unlucky to say before lunch? At any rate, here are the lunch codes. Try not to worry too much. Our ships are every bit as safe as Slate could be persuaded to make them. Best of luck out there. Let me know if I can help you with anything. Okay, I've got the lunch codes. Let's go back to the ship then. I mean, they gave you a lot of choices of where you could go, but I guess, yeah, I'm gonna start small, because, uh... I just kind of remember the controls of the... Oh, this fucking thing. It's gonna look at me. Its eyes are open now. It it does have like kind of goat eyes. Uh, what the fuck was that? Where's the guy that was here? Can I like talk to him about this? Oh, I can't talk to him about it. Where are the other travelers? Well, let's see. Short is on the Hourglass Twins. Rybeck is on Brittle Hollow, and Gabro is on Giant's Deep. And there's Feldspar, obviously, but of course we don't know where they are, or if they're even still alive. Feldspar has been lost for a very long time, I'm afraid. But we hear the music from Dark Bramble. Feldspar was one of the four founding members of Outer Wilds, along with our flight coach Kassan, Slade the Engineer, and me. As ground control and later the museum curator, I didn't work with Feldspar as closely as Slade and Kassan did. I can tell you Feldspar was absolutely fearless though, nothing scared them. Maybe that's what maybe that's what brought their demise. Test piloted everything Slate ever built. It's a wonder Feldspar lived to see space, frankly, but they did. Flew all sorts of dangerous stunts and explored everything they could find. And then one day they just didn't come back. We don't know what happened or where where Feldspar went or even whether they're still alive. It's been a long time since they left. So I cannot talk to him about what just happened. As I'm kind of guessing, this is some kind of like beacon or artifact. Just like in Mass Effect. Like maybe it imparted some knowledge into me, like some visions or prophecy or... Either it gave me information or maybe it took information from me. Who knows? I guess we'll find out later. Launch tower. Oh, and that's nice. They give you like a little... Hey, Hal. Did you get a good look at that Nomai statue? Do you know something? Like, is are you behind this? The statue looked at me and opened its eye. Whoa, whoa, the statue was doing what? So its eyes opened and then you saw images from your own memories and glowing lights flying around? You mean like a hallucination? Listen, no offense, but... Are you sure you're okay to launch, like, medically speaking? No, that statue is definitely weird. I mean, if you're saying it happened, then I guess maybe it did, but why? Ornfels tried everything to get the statue's eyes to open and nothing like this ever happened to them. I don't think you're going to get any answers from the museum statue, but Gabro said they were going back to Giant's Deep. They know which island they're on, though. Maybe they'd be able to tell you more? On the other hand, Gabro's, you know, Gabro, so... Maybe you'd be better off searching for more info on your own. Jeez, now I'm really jealous you're going into space. Hey, see if you can use our translator tool to find out more about the statue, okay? Good luck and safe flying. Uh, yeah, I'm definitely gonna do that. You wouldn't know more about what's happening than you're letting on, would you? Hmm. 
Well, out to space we go. They really want you to go and see Gabro, but uh, Giant's Deep is like one of the first planets. So like, I don't really want to go there right away. So are these doors ever going to open or probably not, right? Hey Tefra. Hello astronaut. Are you going to space and never coming back like Felspar did? That's pretty disturbing. But Hornfell says no one knows what happened to Felspar. Hornfell says they got lost in space even though they were the best pilot ever. Yeah, that's very reassuring. Thank you. You're not as good as Felspar, so you should be really careful not to get lost. Thank you for your trust. Thanks for the vote of confidence. Alright, this takes us back to the entrance. I am ready to launch. The excitement of a launch is fun and all, but I can't wait to get back to working on the new ship. We're working on fixing the autopilot's avoidance system for this one. Uh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I could use that. Alright, this is it. Enter the launch codes and we're going to go into space. That's very... There's something just so scary about going out in space. Actually, before going to the Adel Rock, I guess we should just explore our own planet before like going out into space. Oh, I can see that... Uh, I can see that structure there. These are the twins. What is this thing? What is that? Did you see that? There's like a blue light. That wasn't on the map. Oh, there it is again. It's like a comet. Yeah, it's like full of ice. It's just like... Kind of in orbit around the... In orbit around the sun. Oh, there's that satellite. Oh, I could spend so much time just looking out in the, into space, so let's... Uh, whoop! Wow, and we just get absorbed in. How convenient. Look at that! That doesn't look like a spaceship at all. It's all like wooden and like... <laughs> that looks like a spaceship if it was built in like Donkey Kong <laughs> or something. Oxygen refill. Spot a tree. Walk towards it. Enjoy. Oh, it's that easy, is it? Got a little first aid kit for, you know, when you get eaten by a giant fucking Cthulhu monster in space. I can suit up. Oh, okay, yeah, that's probably a good idea. See beyond the horizon. Oh, it's the little scout. Illuminate dark areas. Detect hazards. Test the environment. View map. The Enterlopper. My lock-on just does not work. The Enterlopper. Okay, so that's the name of that comet. And then what's this thing? It really is like some kind of black hole. I'm, I just wanted to see if like anything happens when it's like... What's all these lights? Were these there before? Look at that. Do you see that in the distance? There's like these little patches of light. Like this thing here. You see that? I don't know what that's about. Like does anything happen when... Because it, it goes really close to it, so I just want to see if something happens. No, I don't think anything is going to happen. But it is weird that it goes so close to this thing. Huh. Okay, so you can access the map at any time. And then you have a chart that's very useful. The interloper, so they know about it. Giant steep. There, there's their satellite that they don't there has no there's no name for it. The Adel Rock. Okay. The Hourglass Twins. I guess we'll start with just exploring our own planet and then the Adel Rock and then we'll move outward into space from there. View entries. Oh. 
Okay, so there's a rumor mode. Eskiris came. Wow, there's a lot. Okay, uh. The one and only Earthian village. Because that makes sense. As well as the main source of explosions on this planet. Mark location on the HUD. Okay, no. The Nomai statue in the observatory opened its eyes and looked at me. I saw strange glowing lights and my own memories flashed before my eyes. Hal says the statue has never opened its eyes before. Despite Hornfell's best effort efforts. Uh, successfully repaired another satellite. Okay. Lunar ruins. I hear there are Nomai ruins somewhere on the Adel Rock. No one knows what they are or why they were built. The Nomai text in the observatory talks about calibrating some sort of device on the Adel Rock. Sounds like Esker is still stationed on the Adel Rock. They've been there by themselves for a while. Gabro. Okay. It's great that you don't have to remember all of this stuff that you hear and stuff. Like, they, it's clearly detailed in this uh, computer. So you can be like, okay, Gabro is there, and like, so-and-so is there, and uh, allows for a more methodical playthrough. Al says Gabro went back to Giant's Deep to try and learn more about the Nomai statue in the observatory. And then there's rumor mode. Oh, okay, because so instead of like being ordered as a map, they're kind of related based on where you heard about it. It's like a... okay. This, this is very cool. Why is this one green? Yeah, I don't know why this one's green. Is it because I'm like... Did I mark it? No, I didn't. Alright, so... Oh, and we get one of these artifacts. I guess that's what's allowing us to like fly in space and stuff. All right, buckle up. Ooh. Lift off, landing camera. Okay, so there's a landing camera. I kind of remember that. And let's lift off. Ooh. And we're we're flying. Oh god. Group signal scope. Okay, let's not go too far yet. My lock-on still isn't working. Okay, so... Just following this river. God, this is very... Difficult to control. So we got... Some little... Mountains here. Ooh, some geysers. Okay, let's not get hit by those. Okay, so some little mountains. That's nice. So, oop, more mountains. Oh, that's gonna be like a giant geyser. Oh, there's stuff down there. Let's go down there and see. Oop. Oop, 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 oop. Oh, it's like parallel parking. <laughs> That's actually very useful. Alright, we did it. Um, how do I... Whoop. There we go. See, I'm a natural. Okay, so this is inside like some giant mountain. Oh, and we can start translating stuff. Mining site 2B. 2B? Okay, so this is a mining site. However, the door is... Oh. I was gonna say the door is closed, but... Okay. And we've got spooky music, and that's a skeleton! A Nomai skeleton, okay. Whoa. And I'm already terrified. Okay, yeah, I think I'm gonna be moving my camera on the other side because there's a lot of stuff in this corner here that I think you guys would want to see, so uh, 
I'm gonna be switching my camera to the other side very soon. Uh, so I got fuel here, so I could be flying. But because we're still on the planet, I think we're good for oxygen, actually. So, okay, so I'm guessing if I fall in this, it's gonna transport me. That's what my gamer sense is telling me. Whoop. Indeed I am. Whoop, and we're going up. Woo! Whoop. Okay. So it doesn't go further up than this. More of these boxes. They said it was like, like art or pottery, but these might actually have another purpose. I guess they're holding, they hold rocks? Or like some, this kind of matter? Oh, and it always tells you where your ship is, which is very useful. Uh, let's translate. I'm still amazed by how much ore the Ash Twin Project requires. The Ash Twin Project. Isn't this the ore for the remaining towers being built on Ash Twin? The completed towers I've seen are quite large. No, the material for those towers is all being taken from Ash Twin. The ore we're mining here will be used to craft an immensely thick protective shell that will physically seal off the chamber inside Ash Twin's core. I'm relieved by our clan's decision to use Timber Hearts ore only for constructing the shell. If eventually life on this planet were to evolve to the point of advanced metallurgy, I'm confident we won't have destroyed their ability to create. Wow, they foresaw all of this. Well, that's very nice of them to think about future generations. If they're sealing off all entrances, I hope they've planned accordingly. <laughs> well, we get to read fucking puns from ancient aliens. I thought you had forbidden your apprentice from making puns, Coleus. How else would he improve? Okay, very interesting. We got logs from ancient aliens and they make jokes. And our ship log is updated. Okay. We get more of these artifacts. Uh. I guess that's our planet. I can't interact with this. Pick up Ash Twin Projection Stone. Ooh. Hello. What's happening? What? Was there something I was supposed to see in there? I see stuff spinning and then... This one has its eyes lit up and this one too. And I'm, I look like I'm in some sp like spinning room. Okay, I don't think I'm supposed to be able to gather any any information from that yet. That's probably something I'll have to come back to later. More skeletons. How would their skeletons survive this long? Uh, why is there like a little triangle room here? Okay, what if I take this thing? and put it here. My gratitude for the latest shipment, oh I know. This ore should be the last we'll need for the Ash Twin project. This is exciting news. Can I offer an extra set of eyes 
for this final check, specifically mine. If my work here is complete, I'd be delighted to help. We'd be grateful if you would. The more eyes, the better, as the smallest flaw or opening in the shell that protects the Ash Twin project could lead to disaster. So the Ash Twin is like an artificial creation? And it's there to protect something? Once we finish the shell that seals off the central chamber, we'll check to ensure there are no longer any physical entrances. Rami and I will be checking the interior and then the exterior for cracks. Our final safety check. Okay, so they, they sealed off something. And the music's changing. So they sealed something after that chamber and they want to make sure it never... There's no way to get in there. Um, can I like fly there? I cannot. I can't use the booster. Shit, I'm about to die, aren't I? Oh no, okay, there's water down here. I thought I could fly freely. I guess I can't. Ooh, okay, I can jump back in this thing at least. Ooh. Like, I want to go up there. Can I not, like... Okay, no, this is where I was. Okay. Uh, let's go back to the ship, then, if I can make it there. Alright, I think that's all we'll get out of this place for now. Can I jump through that? Alright. Made it. Um, so we get a little bit of information here, but not much. I'm guessing we'll get... Um, either this will make more sense later, or we can come back with different triangles, and then maybe we can get different logs? Also, can you run? I still don't think you can run. Oh. Oh, I think this leads to the village. Does it? No. Oh, that's a lot of water. Okay, it leads outside. To somewhere. I need to start using my scout launcher. Oh. It got caught by the water. Okay, never mind. Yeah, I need to start using that more. Uh, the sun appears to be expanding. Rapidly. Uh, I mean, don't be alarmed, but I think the sun might be expanding. Hmm. Uh, also, it keeps... You, you can't really see it, but it keeps track of where you've been on the map, it seems, which is a, another little nice touch. They added, like, a, a few things to help you navigate the world and, like, remember where you are, where you've been, where you're going. Okay, so No My Minds, Ash Twin Project. The No My Mind... And I also like that despite all you find is dialogue, they give you like a summary of what you found is. The Numai Mind Ore from this side of to craft a protective shell designed to physically seal off the central chamber inside Ash Twin. Once the, cell, the shell was finished, the Numai checked to ensure there were no longer any physical entrances or cracks. The central chamber inside Ash Twin was physically sealed off by an immensely thick protective shell. And then this one remains like a question mark because I guess we haven't been on Ash Twin. Or because there's more to discover. Oh god. Oh, there's. Whoa, the interloper is like inside of it. It's going through it. 
it's like inside oh i don't think it's coming out i think it was just like absorbed also like that other structure that was around it has also been absorbed because it's definitely expanding now Uh, wait, how can I refuel? Can I refuel? Okay, yes, you can refuel. Good. Uh, I think that's all we'll see down here. Let's fly up, even though I'm very scared of what we're about to see when we look up into the night sky. Oh, and that's where I was. Anything over here? Am I even gonna have time to... Oh, I don't think I'm super stable right now. Okay, now we're out in that area. It's gotten completely dark. I love how it shows you your memories, but it includes parts of the HUD. <laughs> Like your interface is also part of your memories. Oh, because they're probably stuff you can see in your suit, so they're not... No, because... no. It's just part of the HUD. And then back to that statue. And we're back to the beginning. What is that thing? What's that thing there that flies off? It breaks off this structure. What is this structure that I'm seeing? Okay, let me pause. So this is the big thing, right? When I mentioned, I don't remember anything about this game except for one thing. Obviously, this is it. As you can probably guess now, this game is on a time loop. This is kind of a Groundhog Day situation. You have a bit of time to explore and then the sun goes supernova and you're brought back to the beginning. So yeah, I didn't know this was about to happen, and I, this is the only thing I, I remember from this game. I knew this was about to happen, because I want you to have my legit first reaction. I'm gonna play the footage of when I played like a, a year or two ago, of like what was my actual reaction when this first happened. I, at the time, I did not expect it at all, so I'm gonna play this right now for you guys, and then we'll come back here. Am I dead? Am I dead? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> that was my reaction when this first happened. I was just completely... Obviously I wasn't like acting up for a let's play. I was just like streaming for my friend, but this was my legit reaction, so... From here on out, this is a pure blind playthrough, because that's the only thing I remembered was the sun explodes and then you reset, so... I'm really excited to find out why and like, uh, solve this mystery. And then you can be like, yeah, did I just die? Bad dream or something? You still look half asleep, but that's a negative on being deceased. 
I know it's tradition to sleep out under the stars the night before launch, but if you ask me, it makes you a little bit jumpy. And also, something I wanted to mention, you'll notice when you talk to people, the world stops, like the fire pauses, and I mean, you still hear sounds, but I'm guessing the entire world stops, which makes sense because because you're on a, you're basically on a countdown. It's like, it's kind of like Majora's Mask. You're on a countdown to destruction, so you don't want to waste any time. So it's nice that they pause the world like this because they give you time to actually read and like you don't feel in as much of a hurry. So this is very nice. Everything in this game so far has been mwah, expertly designed. As launch code. Yeah, he says launch codes, but I still have the launch codes because they don't want you to repeat the like intro every time. So we can like just go straight into space. And now we're back. And we have time now. Is that the yellow rock? Yeah, I think it is. I think this is the structure, right? Okay, where's my map? Oh, I need the suit. Pre flight checklist Jetpack auto boost. Translator auto equip. Freeze time. Oh, okay, so. Interesting. Okay, so this is an option. I thought it was just like how it is by default, but it's, it's actually an option. Freeze time while translating text, freeze time while reading ship log, and freeze time while talking to others. Uh, I'm glad that I didn't see this until later because it would have kind of spoiled, I guess, the time's passing, but I mean, it doesn't tell you the sun's gonna explode, it just tells you that the world is revolving, which it is, so I guess that's fine, but it's very nice that they give you this option. So now I have access to the map. What is that structure that I can see up in the sky? Like the one that gets destroyed. I can't tell. And I also don't know what is the thing that we see when we first... <gasps> like when you first open your eyes, you see a little blue light flying off after destroying something. And why this moment? Why is it at this time that the world resets? I don't know. Like, what is it about this specific event that, like, that's important? Illuminate dark areas. Okay. So, do I... But your ship logs remain the same. I wonder... I don't know if that's just a gameplay thing, because they don't want you to, like, have to retrieve the stuff. Because it wouldn't make sense that your ship remembers what... Unless because it's of this thing? Because of this thing it remembers? It's probably just more of a gameplay thing, you know? Because they don't want you to have to repeat everything. Let's do just a little bit more today. Okay, so... We've tried flying around the planet a little bit. Oh, we haven't been here. See, this is where I was. Uh, when it first happened to me, I was in this crater. And I don't actually remember what's here. Oh, that's... They mentioned something had crashed on the planet, didn't they? And that there was smoke coming out of it? I think this is it. Uh... It's so weird, this game... This game makes me feel like claustrophobic, or not... Not It's like the opposite of claustrophobic, I don't know what that is, like this... I'm scared of like wide open spaces. The fact I know I'm like out in space, there's something so scary about that. And like I'm, I haven't even ventured out yet, out in the... furthest reaches of space, but there's something just so deeply terrifying about the idea of like floating alone in space. Because, like, you can't just hold on to anything, you know? It's, like, the vastness, the emptiness. So, that kind of looks like a bramble. Like the dark bramble that's... Yeah, that looks like a piece of that. It looks like a piece of this thing crashed on our planet, which can be good. Along with, like, what is this, glass? Ice? 
Oh, it might be ice because like there's some frozen mountains. I don't know. Tektite. Hey, yo, Hatchling. Thought you were taking that tin can of yours into space today. What are you still doing here? Me? I saw something crash over the horizon and didn't like what I was seeing in the pictures my little Scott was sending back, so I thought I'd come over here myself and take a look. Is that a dark bramble seed? You think so? It's nothing I've ever seen on Timber Hard before, so you're probably onto something there. Whatever it is, it put down roots in a hurry. I don't like the look of this thing, Hashling, and that's a fact. Think I'll set Marl and Hal loose on it. Best get rid of this mess sooner rather than later, and no one can remove an unwanted plant faster than a tree keeper can. I'll have to get a look at what's inside the seed first. Don't want to set anybody to hacking up a potentially dangerous plant without a better idea of what's lurking inside there. Tuff can help me haul the old scout launcher over here. Obviously the opening is too small for someone to fit inside. And anyway, I'm not gonna blindly stick my hands into anything that looks as unpleasant as that seed does. That's a good way to lose an arm or two. Yeah, because this is very ominous looking. There's like, there's light coming out of it. There's also an opening in the back. So it's like a giant seed, but it looks, it definitely, it definitely looks evil. And the harmonica guy is in there? But he's also like out in space, isn't he? Weren't we also hearing that from Dark Bramble? Blasted seed did a lot of damage when it crashed. I like this crater. My signal co- yeah. I'm glad you can actually talk to the characters about what you're finding. My signal scope is picking up a harmonica inside the seed. Inside the seed? Huh. They don't know what to tell you there. The only harmonica player I know is Fieldspar, and they disappeared ages ago. Listen here, don't go telling nice about the harmonica music, okay? They'll never let me get rid of this darn seed if they suspect it has any musical talent. You're sure the seed isn't from Timberheart? Back in my younger days, I explored everywhere there is to go on Timberheart and saw everything there is to see. I mean, it wouldn't be very hard, it's a very small planet. Trust me, we don't have anything like this. Now I reckon this thing's from Dark Bramble, if it's from anywhere, Hashling. Yeah, that, that is my guess as well. Alright, let's try and shoot out a scout in there. Error duplicate signal. What the fuck? What is that? Okay, it stopped moving. There was like one of these angler fish. Duplicate signal. Duplicate signal. Cause yeah, it transported it. The scout is there. Wait, it says 25 kilometers. And there it's 800, wait, what? It says 800 meters there, and then 23 kilometers there. Huh. I think it's being teleported into Dark Bramble. And then at the center, see there's like a big... Oh, it's not an anglerfish, but it's shaped like an anglerfish and there's trees in there. And then some seed. Yeah. And then the there's a seed just like this one in a grotto that has teeth like an anglerfish. And it's over there. 
Let me see if I can get a better look where that is. That is Dark Bramble. Okay, so it is on there. Huh. Interesting. It got teleported to this other place. So it's like a it's a wormhole. It's a wormhole between our planet and Dark Bramble. Interesting. Get a little hut here. Closed due to fire damage. The old radio tower, while an important landmark, is unfortunately closed thanks to the unsanctioned flight testing of an extremely powerful model rocket. While we hope to repair the radio tower in the future, all construction efforts are currently focused on the planned museum expansion at the observatory. Sincerest apologies except to Slate and Micah. <laughs> From Hornfels, okay. He's like, sorry to everyone except these two fuckers. That fuck this up. I mean... I don't really see any fire damage on this thing. It looks fine. Uh, anyone here? Hey, that's creepy as fuck. Jumbo. Okay, someone left a little message. Charting stars again out by the radio tower. They're so bright out here. I only wish I were able to record them faster. Admittedly, I could use more patience. I get so engrossed in my work that sunrise becomes an unwelcome deadline and daylight a grating slog. Someday I'll have to study the mechanics of how time manages to slow to a syrupy crawl whenever I'm anticipating something. In the meantime, I've turned to Gabro, our resident expert in leisurely whiling away the hours, who recommends the following. Gabro's three foolproof steps from dozing off. Light a nice cozy campfire and get comfortable. Gaze deeply into the serene warmth. Let time begin to slip away as you allow the flames to lull you into peaceful slumber. How nice. If Gabro knew I'd taken notes, they'd probably think I'd finally cracked. But I refuse to accept sass from an astronaut who deliberately burns their marshmallows. Okay. Is there anything else like... Unidentified signal nearby. Frequency unidentified. Uh, oh wait, I can float. I can fly up here. I almost forgot. There's a signal being captured by this tower. What can I do about that? Whoop. Whoop. Okay, so I'm, I have a little boost, but it's kind of limited. Uh, what can I do about this signal being... Deep space radio. Radio tower. Frequency discovered. Deep space radio. Okay. Can I do anything about that? Deep space radio. Is that just added to my, like, clues now, or...? What is that? What is that? Oh, it's gone. Did you see that? There was like another... Oh, here comes the interloper. Does the interloper get captured by the sun? Is that what's happening? It's like the gravity of the sun too strong, it's like... Get like swallowed. No, not this time. But I'm guessing it goes closer every time and then once it gets absorbed, that's when the sun blows up. You know, this is all very nice, all these little planets. But when you see something in the sky that's not mapped, that's not named, 
That's when I start to panic. Uh, I guess that's just the interloper. We know that's the yellow rock. What's this? What's that? There's like another fucking a whole ass planet that's unmapped. It's gone again. I keep like losing sight of it. Where is it gone? Am I like imagining things? Hmm. All right. So, ow. Okay, that's that took damage. That's not good. So, what about that radio signal? Is it like in my ship log now? It is. Dark bramble seed inside the seed. That's it. What about that radio signal? A seed from Dark Bramble crashed here and has already taken root. Tektite wants to use a scout launcher to get a look at what's inside. My signal scope picks up harmonica music when I aim it at the seed. I launch my little scout into the seed. Somehow the seed is much bigger on the inside. When I launch my scout into the seed crashed on Timberheart, it ends up in a much bigger space filled with fog and thorny vines. Okay, that's all we have for now. Uh... And then there's that radio signal, but it doesn't really want to tell me anything about that, so... Reset loop and quit to main menu. So next time we start, we'll be starting back from the beginning, okay. Very, very, very intriguing stuff. Like, this game, I'm so intrigued by that mystery. Like, there's... They, they're setting up a lot of different things. The, the statues, of course, that time loop, which is like the main thing, and then like, these radio signals these unnamed planets and objects in space that you don't know what they are. There's so many things we don't know and it's really exciting. I hope you guys are interested. I'm guessing that most of you have played this already if you're watching this. If you haven't played it, again, I kind of recommend playing it on your own because it's, I, apparently it's one of these games that you need to play by yourself. But if you are not really interested in playing it and you'd rather watch me, uh, that's alright too. I'm not gonna complain. <laughs> but yeah, I'm very excited to be playing this game. I hope you're enjoying the playthrough so far. If you want to be sure to catch the next videos when they come out, be sure to subscribe. You can leave a comment, tell me what you think of this uh, first episode. Again, if you're new to the channel, I have many other playthroughs. I'm doing Elden Ring right now, I have like Walking Dead, I did Last of Us, uh, Life is Strange. So yeah, if you enjoyed this, consider checking out my other playthroughs. You can subscribe for more, you can join my Patreon if you'd like. I had fun recording this, I hope you had fun watching it, and I hope you'll catch me in the next one for more Outer Wilds. See y'all.